So, good morning. I wish to speak to you about uh, Conversations with Magic Stones, which is an exhibition uh, housed in Orkney in 2017. Um, and this exhibition came out of a uh, Lee Hume Trust funded research project entitled Working Stone Building Communities, Technology and Identity in Prehistoric Orkney. And this ran between 2014 and 2017, it was directed by Mark, and there was a big project team, including Anne Clark, Antonio Thomas, William Musgrove, and I'm very much presenting on behalf of everyone today. Now, the focus of this project was um, Mesolithic through to Bronze Age stone tools. <coughs> Um, all of which were from Orkney, this lovely uh, group of islands off the very north tip of mainland Scotland. Now, we have three principal areas of interest in this project. One of them being the origin and significance of stone tools in prehistory, as you might expect. Um, but this uh, aspect in Orkney is actually a very neglected part, uh, a very neglected part of the story. Um, prehistory in Orkney. Um, is largely told through the upstanding monuments. And this is partly because we have such a wonderful collection of monuments in Orkney, um, such as tombs such as Wyford Hill that you can go inside, uh, monuments such as the Ring of Brodka there, a fantastic monument complex, and also settlements such as Scarabray where you know the buildings are still preserved to roof height, and because of the stone architecture, you still have significant element of bed boxes and the like surviving. So we found that even stone tools, such as these beautiful maces here, actually they never feed into these grand narratives of prehistory in Orkney. And we really wanted to redress that balance. Um, our second area of interest was looking at object biographies and the afterlives of objects. And we really wanted to um, both explore some individual objects in a great deal of detail, such as this beautiful mace head at the bottom here, uh, which is made of Lewisian nice, comes from the very northwest of Scotland, possibly the Hebrides, and came to Orkney in the Neolithic, but probably, probably buried actually in the Bronze Age. Um, and other examples, such as this cache of artifacts here, again, more Neolithic artifacts, assets, knives, all gathered together and again buried against the site wall of a tomb in the Bronze Age. It's, it was in a bag tied together with a bead perforated button. But we wanted to follow these biographies through right from the distant past, right the way up to their discovery over the last couple of hundred years, and also look at the sort of significance of these objects in the here and now. And to really get to this last point, the significance of objects in Orkney today, we went out and we interviewed many people who have objects in their collections. Becky will, uh, sorry, uh, Becky will be eyeing up that paleo canvas, which definitely doesn't belong to Orkney, but uh, it's, it's in someone's in someone's hands in Orkney. And so we went out and we looked at various collections of objects that people had in their homes, on their mantelpieces, and asked them what they meant to them. Now, our third area of interest is obviously the history of collecting. Um, uh, it's very much obviously allied to the last topic. Um, and we really wanted to look at the history of collecting both from the perspective of individuals involved in it, institutions, wants to look, explore the different motivations for collecting in Orkney and then look at these wider relationships and networks um, that developed over time. So the main outcome of our project was actually a web resource, so I'm going to plug it here, orkneystotools.org.uk um, and as you might expect this has lots of pages devoted to individual artefacts such as battle axes here, um, other pages devoted to tool technology, raw materials, archaeological sites, um, and pages to talk the bio with the biographies of collectors telling the stories of their collections. And throughout the site, there's quite a lot of embedded 3D content, also a lot of high resolution images in that as well. But today, I'm going to talk about the exhibition that came out of the project um, and was uh, featured across three venues in Orkney in the summer of 2017. Now, for those of you wondering where the title of my talk comes from, Conversations with Magic Stones is a sculpture by Barbara Hepworth, the sculpture on the left here. And the reason for us choosing this title was because our first venue, uh, the Pier Art Centre, which is a, a sort of contemporary art gallery in Stromness, um, has a very large collection of Hepworth material. And Hepworth was very much inspired by the forms of prehistoric objects, 
Um, and you know, you can just see within this sculpture at the bottom two forms Orkney, which was recently a uh, recent acquisition by the Pure Art Centre. Um, you know, it's got a very striking resonance to me, the thick mace heads and, and other Orcadian tools. Um, so we brought together both a collection of artifacts from the uh, Wakefield, uh, her, Wake, her Wakefield archive, and these are these are stone tools which she held in her personal collection to inform form sculptures. They include arrowheads, axes, weights, obsidian cores, and so on. And we brought a collection of her tools up as well to display alongside these these objects. And within that space, we also put a number of prehistoric objects, um, such as very mundane objects, such as this uh, hammer stone and anvil. You know, it's a, from an Esplanade. It's a very boring, mundane, everyday functional tool. But putting it in a gallery setting, obviously, you know, it very much plays on the aesthetic in a different way. Now, our second venue, the Orkney Museum, and I, I apologise for this photo. This is, I realised that I'd only taken the 360 camera to the event, so I didn't actually have any good normal photos. <laughs> <laughs> so the technology <laughs> failed. So, <laughs> um, so, um, so yes, uh, this uh, this venue, we we sort of continued the theme of having a sort of artistic response to our project. We had Paul Musgrove, and throughout the project, we supplied Paul with archive images of objects, new images of artifacts, text, documents, and the like. And these are some of the reflections he had on, on this material that we sent him. Um, but the, the exhibition itself in the Orkney Museum, we focused on telling some of those longer-term biographies of artifacts, um, and also the history of collecting selecting specific collectors right the way through the 19th and 20th century to tell that story uh, in Orkney. And what we, really want, what we really wanted to do with this was sort of to pull out those, those different reasons that people collected prehistoric stone tools in Orkney. We've got these sort of what we call the established collectors here, like George Petrie on the uh, left and James Walls Kirster on the right. Collectors who collected very widely, very extensively, they amassed very large collections of material. And they were part of these very wide networks. They were in contact with Sir John Evans. They were in contact with Sir John Lubbock. Their, their artifacts were for, feeding into these larger narratives of prehistory during the late Victorian period. Um, and eventually, they deposited them with, with very large museums off Orkney. But there were many other forms of collecting in Orkney, and many other reasons for collecting. And we, we came across dozens of small collections of objects. And these were objects which were related very much to sort of a quiet commitment to one place, one bit of land. This very big collection of stone tools here is all from a couple of fields in Orkney on the farm of uh, Thomas and Jock Linklake, a father and son who collected these over the 30s and 70s. That's the first Mesolithic micromint from Orkney identified in the 1930s. So these were feeding into bigger narratives. But these objects didn't go into the museum. They've passed down through the family, and those families still keep them. They're objects that are connected to a time, they're connected to a place, and you know, they're very much, they, they've gained new stories since, uh, since, since they were first picked up. Now, a third, a third venue, um, we were, Stromness Museum, we were looking at objects that washed into Orkney in the more recent past. Um, so these are all prehistoric objects, but they're not Orcadian prehistoric objects. Although, if you look at them, this arrowhead on the bottom here says Stromness Orkney 1931. The other one, Orkney 1900. But these are North American arrowheads, and we found dozens of these in collections across Orkney. And a lovely one from uh, which was said where the haystack used to be, it was found on a farm in, Sa in Sandy. It was again amongst the lovely collection of Orcadian materials. But these arrowheads. Uh, actually, they're, they're, they're about Al Orkney's sort of recent past. They're about the last 200 years. Orkney's connections to the wider world as a, as a, as a sort of major seafaring sort of community, particularly in Strong Ness, the connections to Hudson Bay Company. And so well, there was a lot of these objects coming backwards and forwards um, from those places and entering, entering the record. The other artefacts we saw an awful lot of were actually Maori Toki. And these, again, have entered Orkney via the whaling ships and whaling fleets that left Strong Ness. Um, but virtually all of these had gained new provenances. 
In fact, in, in Orkney Museum until, until two years ago, there was one on display. It was dug up in a farm in Rendell. Um, just kind of been there very long. Um, but the stories that came with them were quite incredible. And when we were speaking to people, we were realising that they still have incredible resonance. They, these two actors, this is how they were presented to us, in a sweet box lined with flowers. Um, and they're objects that, are, by the point we see seeing here, they were found in Uncle Willie's toolbox. They have a story about being connected to, um, to uh, being found in uh, Hatton Airfield uh, near Kirkwall in Orkney. And they pass through several hands. And then we realise that these are actually objects which are very much about memory. Their significance is through memories, different people, connections to different people, and connections to places. But they're objects about forgetting as well. They have these forgotten histories of their original, original histories in more distant, on more distant shores. Although they're objects also about remembering and remembering the past. So that's all right. I'm running very ahead of time. So uh, <laughs> my last slide. I'm behind. So you know, in trying to pull together some sort of more concluding thoughts on this, I was thinking. You know, the, really, the, the I've been talking very much about the significance of stone, stone tools in the present, um, and you know, some of the stories we were told about objects in Orkney were incredibly personal, and they resonated around, around through these through these objects. And what we felt through our exhibitions is that sort of by sort of contem presenting um, past and present sort of significance in parallel, that you could create a real resonance between. Um, past and contemporary societies, and in a way that you could, you know, get people to engage with that material through through expressing it in that way, and you, you know, you had a real opportunity here to for uh, emotional engagement between objects, people, and places, and that's something that obviously we can project into the past as well. It's something we often forget about the significance of the uh, the biographies which are embedded in those objects for the really important thing about them. So, yeah, to sum up. It's sort of while our sort of stone artifacts in particular are very versatile, um, their biographies are fragile, they can be lost and forgotten, but also reinvented, and that's where so much of the significance is embedded within them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.